And okay, I think we are back with Leof, so the, the action is here. Hammerhead are ready to start their attack that needs to match the 343. A great nade comes out, but Rune gets slept on the way down. And so far with Omgo, he's going to be able to survive for about 0.5 seconds. He falls, but the trade is there immediately onto Rune. It does not stop Hammerhead from pushing that card underneath because they do have that Kiriko. Kiriko is going to uh, provide that mobility there for the Hammerheads. And really, again, it's taking out that monkey. If you lose the Winston, that's the key piece of this comp, right? That's what enables the dives and the picks to happen. So once you lose that piece, it's all over for that push. I mean, you saw a lot of pressure going towards the Winston of Destiny MP, but Obese Prodigy was way focused onto Dax and Sieg. So when the, when the jump happened, there was just a lot less power behind the actual attack. So Hades are going to be able to stop this attack before the cart even gets that first checkpoint. So it seems like matching the time of their opponents is a lost cause for the Hammerheads. Hades has also has that pulse bomb online here. And... Poppy has been able to find Thom go out. Maybe we'll see something come up from the back line. Dax is also trying to find a little bit of pressure, but these dueling tracers, right? So who can find the value first? Find that quick hit. Dax is actually pushing the tracer off of that high ground, but the Pice Bomb is thrown out, doesn't find anything. And so far, you could really call this a victory for Hammerheads if they can push this Echo and the Winston off of that high ground. But so far, Dax eventually pulls the trigger, and then takes out that Echo. The Kitsune is actually used on that top rope just to try to push that Winston off, but Flaming Fury and Sai have done such a good job at keeping up him up, and Dax is actually able to find a punch kill onto Poppy, winning that Tracer duel, but where the power comes from is that tank, but unfortunately, I think eventually Hades might fall. Hammerhead here is really starting to come together. Destin, we saw jumping into the back line, chasing around that Ana, and no more. Destin is making these calculated dives, making sure that the high ground can be controlled by the rest of the team. And again, seeing some consistent great damage come out from the DPS line from C and Dax. Oh, and a late kill coming out as well. Pwn takes out Poppy, which I think it, it is a full backup from Hades, so it's not going to be the biggest impact in the world. It's just going to allow Hammerhead to potentially get the cart near that second corner. We're just waiting for the d defense to actually initiate. With the defense, well, it's here, right? Hades has pulled up. They're trying to control the ship, see what they can find, and they're actually going to find a pick onto C. There's never just a free pick, though. Whether it's Hades or Hammerhead getting the opening, it's always just traded out. Seek does survive for now. You cannot really say the same for Dax. I, I said it earlier, you're not going to be able to find a free kill, and Seek actually pops that ultimate with Obese Prodigy using his own ultimate just to survive. And that one might be one that he wants back as well. So it's just the support to take out the backline, Flaming Fury. So no chance in the way of this Sojourn. And it's really just clean up in this moment. Sieg has just been railing through his opponents. Railing through the opponents is really the best way to put it because that railgun is doing work. All those shots are connecting with the overclock and taking down the back line. Just really egoing the the uh, the support line. I mean, it's not like they can do too much from the from the back there, but... We'll see Hammerhead try to maybe match the time bank. They, they at least get as close as they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, three minutes versus 3.43. At that point, it's just, it, uh, it's not really that big of a deal. But interesting to note with Obese Prodigy swapping onto the Genji. And swapping onto the Genji against the Winston. It's not really the best thing you would see, but... They're going to try and make it work here, and Dax is also going to try and make it work in the back line, trying to find a pick here. Yeah, so you trade out your Ana for the Genji, so Dax is barely surviving. He's going to get healed up by the cart, and I, I think you might call it quits if you're Hammerhead on this attack. You have no more healing. You lose your tank, but Dax decides to come hit the Pulse Bomb, and that might be a big play in the future that this team will want back, but for now... They do have that cart rolling back, and they're not really going to be able to get close to matching the time of hate. They're really going to go with this all-in type of approach here with the, the Tracer, the Genji, and the Winston all-in-one. 
we we might see Hades try and get really aggressive here on the corner. Oh, but a great nade, and there's that pulse bomb that actually came up from Poppy. You can see the power that it can have, and, and losing your support will hurt, and Hades knows that very well, because they do not have Flaming Fury. And even though you have, like, dual fights happening at once, one in the back line, one in the front line, Hades will be the victors of it overall, because well, the tank and your trace are all at one health, and no healer to help them. Unfortunately, they will fall as Hammerhead looked like. They've actually got the the Hades of the previous map. Hammerhead is seeming to consistently find Flaming Fury and get the kill in the back line, but at that time, it's always been a numbers game. The Ana's going down too late. At that point, I mean, Poppy and Rune, they're already inside the back line. You're gonna see then Winston jump in with Poppy going down. It's Winston alone with Kira. That, that's always what happens, and either the, the offense just turns around, or they just worry about the back line. It's one or the other, and Hammerhead cannot focus on that dual attack at once, and it's another clean fight from Hades. It's uh, going to be a big ult advantage as well, because there's almost six ultimates coming online here from Hades. Mm -hmm. Hammerhead, they might be able to look for an early pick, might once again try and get Flaming Fury down a bit early, but I feel like we're going to see an engagement here first from Hades. They're really trying to move first here and try to get that early that early advantage. Yeah, and then what counter do you have to the Nano Blade? The Rune does go down, but they still commit the Nano Blade. And a big sleep from Thongon. That's two ultimates that might be wasted, and Sieg decides to commit is. Can he save his teammate? He does! And great counters coming out from Hammerhead. This might allow them to push the cart over the edge. And you have to commend Thongon and Pone for their ability to just keep the opponent at bay. But now with Brigida, has that ultimate, has the ability to give her teammates overheal. And the sleep again saves Thong God's life. And he's still in this, still getting his team hope. And just as I say that, Poppy finds the two piece. Kiriko might fall and Hammerhead. They were so close to reaching that finish line with not a lot of power by their side. And only one second, they might need a miracle with us. They might need a miracle, but I don't know if Hayes can make it happen, right? They or Hammerhead can make it happen because they're staggering onto this point. They're really not having too much to work with at this point. They've popped most of their ultimates, and they're not going to be seeing too many kills coming out yet. I, you say that. And the Kitsune rush is big. This team was able to coalesce together at the last second and try for a push. When it seemed like all hope was lost and the fight wasn't clean, this team said no, and they put up one final effort, and they get one more chance at Gibraltar. They are down three minutes and 45 seconds, but as they say, it's winnable. It's winnable, and I think that's what needed to happen is that I need to say that it was over for them to bring it back. That's right. It. That's, yeah. that's always how it works. <laughs> it's it's called the caster's curse, Wigloff. You will <laughs> have to realize that if you say something is going to happen, there is a 60% chance that what you just said, the opposite is going to happen. And it is the most frustrating thing in the world, but it also is a good source of content. So. I think that Hammerhead is... I mean, caster curse aside, they're doing they're doing a great job at adapting, mm -hmm. and we've seen them go up against a big time bang before. I don't think it's going to phase them. I think that Genji is going to help them put in some work here. We saw one nano blade, but we're gonna be we'll be seeing how that changes now that they're playing the Kiriko instead. Yeah, with Sieg actually helping on the transfer this time, with Dax on the Genji, so it's a very, very dive-heavy comp. Instead of having, like, a 50-50 style thing where you have somebody on the Sojourn just play a little bit more back, no, it is full send, kill Flaming Fury, kill Saya, don't have your back line die, and it has to happen all at once. I mean, Destined, I hope that was intended because they did miss that little barrier, but it's enough to send Hades back to that high point, keep them off the balcony. And this has to be a pitch-perfect attack with only 45 seconds to work. 
rune is helping control that high ground here as Destin looks up, but that, that it's, it's not going to work out for them. They're really, really going to have to coordinate here to be able to pop up, to be able to get in the back line, and be able to just look for those picks, and Rune is going to be able to find one on Pound. See, he's getting so dangerously close to getting that kill onto Obi's Prodigy, and Flaming Fury, yet again, is one of the first players to go down on Hades. But like always, there's going to be a trade, and Hammerhead are fully able to take out both supports, but they lose so much in the process. The card has to be touched. It is, but it might be with a loss of life. And with not much time at their back, they're going to be able to get the card barely through the car wash. Not much more than that. Four minutes and 43 seconds is what Hades has to beat this very meager push. And I don't know if Hammerhead... It would be a crazy defense to stop it. This spot, though, where the cart stopped is actually pretty ideal in terms of places to defend because you have a... You just have, like, a lot of mobility here and being able to drop down and then hop back up, right? There's a lot of ways that you can kind of easily contest the cart with the team composition that they were running especially if you're using that lucio or if you're using that kiriko with that wall climb ability so there's potential here there's there's something that they can work with but also they're not going to be running that lucio they're going to instead going to be running more of that kind of that a little bit of that poke comp, that hybrid dive comp with the D.Va and the Tracer. So this is going to be different than what we saw last time. This is going to be a little bit more like that King's Row match where we are seeing uh, Destin trying to look for those, really that that strength of that, that tool, that dual man dive with the Tracer instead of the that full on rush style with the with the Genji Lucio. I think the thing, though, is Hammerhead has to be perfect. He cannot make a single mistake, because if they do, good night. That's it. It is over. And Pwn might have put the book to rest like that. But Destiny is going to be able to get one. And Poppy is just trying to neatly push the cart underneath. Maybe get just a free little kill. He is getting pressured off. And Flaming Fury does fall as well. So it will be a full reconvene for Hades. Or say full as if Poppy isn't underneath. Trying to get a very sneaky bat cap that is most assuredly not going to happen. And Hades have this big time bank. They have the opportunity to build up ultimates here. And with the Destin going down and losing the mech, it's really not looking good here for Hammerhead. When the jump happens, you have to have Hammerhead. They have to drop down immediately. Hope that the top cart isn't pushed, which it actually isn't, and that the time will just be enough to get one full contest to get Destin back in time. And I will think that's what happened. The D.Va is here, but Dax is gone. It's still a 4v5. You lose a pivotal source of damage. And Zeke is now on the top ground. He doesn't have the ability to support his teammates. And without that, Hades should be able to fully kill the remaining two. It's only just crunching that D.Va mech. He's going to get back in time. But with 5v1, there's not much hope on the side. The nuke doesn't get much. The Tracer will go down, and Hades will take map two. It's not as clean, but like I said, they will take map three, not map two. It's tough to recontest there when you have no ultimates online, when you have such a little space to work with. Hammerhead, they tried their best, but Hades is going to clean up here. And this is match point for Hades. Yeah, we saw the adaptations. We, we've mentioned that a lot, and I think Hades... Did that very wonderfully, but Hammerhead did a great job of countering. So, overall, what do you think the big picture was for Hades? Why were they the ones that really took control in Watchpoint Gibraltar? I think that Echo play was so strong, right? Echo was really able to dive with um, the Winston there, and also they were just looking clean. They were looking, their dives were looking much more tight, much more focused, and. We saw a little bit of tunnel vision. We saw a little bit of just uh, uncoordinated dives. 
or just the, like a little bit of like getting a little bit too focused on the the echo versus yeah i think that's it it comes down to like the cleanliness of the of the comps of the plays there a the the cleanliness and the ability to section off a lot of the players because that's what it comes down to with dive is you want to separate let's say the Ana or the brig versus everybody else and one thing that hades was constantly able to do was they would jump in hammerhead would jump on in but there wasn't as much support coming in with the hammerhead dive meanwhile hades always had the heals they always had consistent damage with the jump you can't really say that for their opponents the hammerhead so the, the their backs are against the wall the five and three team the iris podcast favorite they are going to come have to come out on this push map with a win to send us into that map five king of the hill i mean hades is looking good right hades i think again we're talking about how they're the favorite but there's also that ability that we've seen for for both these teams to adapt right we we're kind of saying the the same thing on map one where hades was really looking like dominant they were just really looking like they were going to take that that 3-0 but then hammerhead just turned it around so i'm not sure i think it'll be a good fight i think i think it'll be it'll it'll come down to whether again hammerhead feels like they can regain that confidence regain that mental forward to to be able to go in and turn this around to uh to a map five and our map four is going to be on Esperanza in portugal it's a very pretty map and well, I mean, with Pushbot, it's another map that you could see a lot of the Winston, but it's also more grounded. The only high point that you are going to see in a lot of these engagements is going to be the, the bridge area by the first little, little checkpoint. So maybe we could see something like a Ramadra that Hades really likes to bring out, but we could also see... <sighs> I'm thinking uh, the Diva could also be something that could be very helpful, but I think just Winston also just does seem to be a favorite of Hammerhead. I think the Ramatra is a really strong pick here. I was saw it in Contenders yesterday. <laughs> That's something that I know that a lot of people look at is that they're seeing what what kind of comps are they running, what kind of uh, what kind of brawl comps are are strong, and I think that we might see that again. The the, the Ramatra may Hansa. Get Poppy back onto the sniper and get those early picks again. I think with, as we see, with uh, 15 seconds and our comps will be revealed. Hades has the wind at their back. They've got a good amount of momentum flowing into this third map. And so far, we talked about the Ramatra. Rune does seem to be like the better Ramatra, but so far, it's a little bit battle of the Winstons with the Sombra falling in play. It's the first time we are gonna see the Sombra, and this one just creates a whole new twist versus how Poppy and Dax are gonna interact with each other. It's gonna be, again, that mirror comp, like we saw on the first map that plays a lot into your mental strength because if you feel like you need to swap then you need to feel like you might need to come up with something creative and adapt in the moment so after this first fight that might also swing some more momentum into the side of either hades or hammerhead and set the tone for the rest of the map and the cleanliness of dives is something that needs to be important as well. Hades were very, very good at that in the previous map. Forced the, the Kiriko to use all of her cooldowns. Rude just keeps all of those players stuck inside of the cafe. And there is a hack onto that Winston. And right now, Hades, they do seem to be the aggressor in this scenario. But Zeke seeks to change that. He takes out Obsessive Prodigy as he is on the flank. And right now, it's just a complete runaround. Hades are now on the side of Hammerhead. They're able to find one, the healer of Zongo, who seems to be that first pick that always goes down. And now with Flaming Fury following. It's really a, a head scratch to see who comes out on top here. We're getting cooldown timers of people getting picked off and coming back to the fight. This is a long one for sure, but Hades is seeming like they might be able to hold on. Not quite yet. Steve has something to say about it. The bot is not being pushed, and I think it'll be pushed by Hammerhead. Eventually. Takes takes a little... Actually, the bot 
needs a little bit of motivation. But at the end of the day, Hammerhead will be able to push it. It'll only be about 15 meters, but it's still progress nonetheless. It gives them the lead. And for now, it's going to keep on trucking. Poppy does have that EMP, but they just fall before they even get a chance to use it. And Ru decides to bring out the Primal Rage to swing his fist to send a lot of the Hammerhead players flying. And with Hades, they've committed ultimates. They've still got a few at their back, and this will allow them to regain composure and regain control of that bot. Finding that EMP early from the side of Hammerheads will be crucial to help take the fight for them, because even though there aren't very many alts online from the side of Hades, that EMP can just provide that first opportunity and then also shut down any chance of Saya being able to stabilize for Hades. So, we'll see what happens. Oh, there it is, and you could tell that they were just looking for Potent, who had that sound barrier up that was gonna be able to keep his team alive. And without that, Dex is still gonna decide to use the EMP, and he pays his life for it. That is one ultimate utilized on both ends, and Hades comes out on top. They're gonna continue to rack up ultimates, while Hammerhead, they will have four in their back pocket, and you can expect them to use a lot here, but it is really making up for lost time at this point. And we might see a pick come out from Prodigy here with that Pulse Bomb almost coming online. The support ultimates can also help sustain moving into this final choke point here with Rune trying to jump in to open it up. That guy just gets no chance. The dives are so good. Wigloff, we, we complimented them for it on that third map and it seems to be following through in here as well. There are four ultimates on the side of Hammerhead, and they haven't used, they, they've used one out of five in three team fights. I mean, talk about saving your money, right? This is, this is, this is a real economical push right now. They are able to match Hammerheads without using any of those alts. It's, it's pretty impressive. It really speaks to the dive ability of Root and Prodigy. Okay, something goes the way of Hammerhead. They use the Kitsune Rush. They were able to take down Rune, and they should allow the bot to get changed. I think that the checkpoint will allow some pretty close spawns, so there could be a decently close hold to happen. And, well, with Hades, they're going to be getting four, potentially five ults online, and we have seen how efficient they are with each ultimate. We've also seen how these Winstons like to brawl here, how they try to look for these off angles as they move in, try to capture Thomgao, get him, go to bound first. Not seeing anything just yet here from me. If you have the dive and that main healer, which is always targeted, does fall, Fleming Curry does put him in so far. Chances are still in this. Both sound barriers are going to be utilized with a primal rage on the side of Hammer. That is an advantage that Rune will have. Flaming Fury, he's going to try to make a grand escape, but doesn't survive. But so far, Hammer, Hammerhead, they do not have the leaps. The lock and the dirty here are the worst they will come out at the end of it. Trying to use that Paul spawn to be able to solidify it, but I think this fight is pretty much already over at this point. It's just desserts, it's just some staggers here. And really, Flaming Fury is doing a great job with those Suzus to be able to sustain the team, make the opportunity for Saya to be able to hit that beat drop, really solidify the end of the fight there just now. I I, I think he's also doing a very good job at just staying alive. You can see the dive is crashing right onto him, and he's still able to be there. There's the EMP. Down goes one. They can save Saya, but maybe they'll be able to salvage the team fight. That is if Dax and the other DPS of C don't find some kills as well. They cannot stop this just disastrous duo of these two players, and Hades will continue to truck along with him. Can't even get the kill onto the damaged player of Poppy. It's all falling apart for this team. 80s. We've been here before. A three minute 50 second time bang. Just this overwhelming advantage. Saya gets hacked, goes down. That should be 
the Hades defense. It is falling in the bot, even though it is 70 meters away from getting tied. This lane has to be chipped away in very short succession, but it has to start now. There's only three minutes remaining on the clock, Wigglop, and Hades are going to continue to get ultimates online. A fight that has to be won by this team, and I think it has to be right now. It has to be right now, but there are some ultimates coming online for the side of Hades. They also have that advantage, and they've been able to successfully fend off Hammerhead so far. So I feel like you might see something super fun. You're able to find that pick, open up the fight here. Yeah, that wasn't actually on to Pwn, but he just got caught in the crossfire. And now with Dom Dom, cannot survive without any heals to help him out. I think that the suit to save Flaming Fury, it does so good at that Wiglop. Always able to stay alive at the last second. Can't stay alive forever. He is not immortal, but I think it's just enough to keep Hades in the fight with the Winston going down. There just is no bra made on the bot and so far the hades lead it's not being chipped away in fact it's being extended we see that emp coming on line as well that is going to be crucial here with countering the beat countering the the suzu right it's going to be it's really going to be a catch all here for hades if they hit that a one for one that we have seen all series. Pone is going to commit the beat drop, and Sai is not alive to actually commit the beat. But I think the thing about Hades is they may not be winning these late game fights, but they're pushing the bot all the way forward, of which Hammerhead has to time wasted between the two. And like I said, Hades is leading by 70 meters. It is nothing to scoff at. Hammerhead has a lot of ground to cover with only a minute 30 left here. They do have some ultimates online, but we need to see a clean dive and Dax goes down. That's one of their big sources of damage. Pwn can't get away. Hades, they flip the script almost immediately. It, it's like the fight wasn't even initiated and it was over in the blink of an eye. You cannot be getting caught out like that on map four at one minute left. That is absolutely crucial that you need to have all six online, especially when you're facing a team that has six ultimates in the bank. It's not looking good for Hammerhead right now. Five ultimates. Every single one can be submit submitted in quick succession. And C goes down even without an ultimate. Dax actually does have it in their back pocket. Do decide to use it, but they've lost their tank in the process. It's just trying to find scraps. The last second, Wicklop, Dax's translocator gets destroyed. They fall. And I think if Hades may not get to the end, hell, they might with the four ultimates that they have. But unless something crazy happens on the side of Hammerhead, the desperation is the only thing that might give them a chance here. Dax is looking on that Reaper to be able to get that brawl potential. Maybe shut down that Winston. It's a short corridor, but that EMP is going to do massive amounts for Hades. And the Reaper is done with Wraith, has no room to breathe. And with Winston, you chapped a chip through that 1,000 health, and victory will be yours. It's wasting time, and the fact that the spawn room is so close will actually be a little bit helpful for Hammerhead. But not only do they have to win this fight, they have to win two, potentially three afterwards. So they get step one done, but he still have both of their support ultimates that they can use in this fight. It's really coming down to finding a quick pick here from Say with the Pulse Bomb. Able to find it, actually without it. So, it looks like Hammerhead might be able to make a bit of a turn here. Get able to be able to push forward and get some extra meters before fully committing to that final fight. And pushing Hades back so they actually can get some cart movement. A hundred meters is what Hammerhead would have to do to force us into a map five. Pulse Bomb is utilized, but a huge cleanse from Flaming Fury keeps him alive and won't be alive for long. But will it be enough to keep Hammerhead away from the victory? Root is just swinging his mighty fist. He takes down C. You can see Dax getting oh so close to that death blossom. 
would be a huge ultimate. He does have that online, but when does he want to use it? He goes forward. He's dealing so much damage to the Winston, and he doesn't even need to. Thomgun has the Coalescence, and he finds two with it. And are things getting a little bit dicey for this Hades attack? But remember, they also do have to win, at this point, about two to three more fights. I keep talking about the massive amounts of utility that EMP has, but I mean, that Coalescence was doing so much sustain there as well, really just enabling Dax to get up into the front line, get down dirty, and throw hands with Droom. All the EMP takes out both healers, and the chance of a miracle run might end here, but Dax just spins his guns. He's able to find one DPS, and the second DPS of C finds the other, and it continues! Wigloff, the Lucio is the only one in the back line, so the EMP was the only ultimate that Hades had, and nothing is coming else online. These fights are gonna be as dry as it gets. They're gonna be having so many Popeye's biscuits without any drink, and C's getting that pulse bomb on the line might be able to take out a healer as quick as that. They're really utilizing the full brawl potential of Winston, Reaper, Lucio from the side of Hammerhead. They're just trying to walk right in, do their damage, get out. Make sure that that Sombra is immediately denied, immediately not able to get a hack off or get any utility. Here comes the attack. The Pulse Bomb is there. It doesn't find anything, but Dax's Hellfire shotguns do. And this team is continuously pushed back. They have maybe one fight to give. And at this point, with 20 meters away, Dax's kill onto Prodigy could be it. Who has the ability to waste time with that Primal Rage. And Saya does have that sound barrier. But is that enough to counter the support ultimates that Hammerhead have? Would this be the miracle run? Wigglelot coalescence is used out. Saya does commit the support ultimates. It's dual support ultimates on both ends. Where is the focus coming from? Poppy does fall. Obese Prodigy as well. And so close to that golden box of victory. All they need to do is work through the health of that Winston. And with so little Hades players remaining, it's only a matter of time before they can do so. No ultimates to speak of on Hades, and just like Hammerhead was looking for a miracle, Hades are looking for a miracle of their own. Will it be in the shotguns of Poppy? He's gonna fire away! Does he die? He does from Thomgom's Moira primary fire. We're waiting until the end, as Hades are just trying to keep their bare chances of keeping this entire thing together alive, but bit by bit, time by time, Hades are eventually falling, and I feel like it's just going on forever, and it surely is. there's no way Hades win this! There is no way, it was just the supports on there for a while with the ball still trying to come out from Hades, but is that gonna be enough? It's not! Wow. They're taking this to map 5! Hammerhead really showing their ability to adapt there. That is... <laughs> I I am shocked that we saw... Was it, was it 100 meters? Wow. wow. In basically one minute, right? No, they yeah. Had, they had the one minute time. Was it, was it even so over... They, I thought it was overtime. Won. Wow. Overwatch. That's Overwatch, overtime. baby. So some some that crazy is. plays. We go to map five. We go to overtime. And I think... Here's where the interesting part comes in. Hades had such great dives, but Hammerhead, they changed what they had. They brought out the Reaper. They just fixed what they needed, the, ad the adaptability. We, we mentioned it in so many maps, but we go back to what I believe is King of the Hill. That didn't look good for Hammerhead. It's... This is what happened. Hammerhead, right? They are getting mm -hmm. just really annoyed, getting really just... Just upset about that Sombra on the back lines. They said, well, we need something that can just kind of take her out. We need something that can get that, that quick burst damage, get that easy response, and that was Reaper in this situation, right? Just able to sit there with the back line, make sure that Thom goes, stays alive, doesn't get picked, and then able to immediately flip that into a brawl, just walk right onto Rune and take him out. Hey, the, the, the brawl was just huge. And a lot of that came down to either the, the Tracer or the Sombra. Whoever was on that character went into the backline and was just so efficient. 
on that. You do have to commend Dax, who uh, on the Reaper found, I think, both one kill onto Poppy and one onto the other player, who went down early on in the, what, what was then like a minute long fight? It uh, started off with 80s players dying and you have to commend honestly all of hammerhead did a very good job but you felt like the dps maybe helped them a little bit more well it's the sustain of the reaper too right that's also how they're able to to stay alive for so long you have rune on point who is basically this health battery for the reaper especially when you're in that primal rage and you have that lucio and that moira on your team you're staggering the coalescence into just the reaper sitting there you throw the beat down that reaper is going nowhere that reaper is just sitting there like an anchor and keeping that point alive yeah, that is true if i'm gone on the moira I, I like i didn't even notice the moira until the <laughs> coalescence found two i was like oh oh we've got a moira and they found two kills that's crazy but uh as we come down from the chaos that was map four we get to tell you what map five is it's nepal and this one should be exciting. I was not expecting to go here. I, I, I mean, not Nepal. I'm just talking about map five in general. But I hope that Hammerhead will be able to put up a little bit more of a fight. Even if we go to that third round, which was definitely all Haiti sided. I just want to see a chaotic fight like we did on the last fight of Ishbranza. This is also a strong map to bring out the, the Reaper comp again, right? Mm -hmm. Because... There's a lot of brawl potential, except for, um, you know, on the uh, the in the indoor map, which I'm forgetting the name of right now. Um, but as long as they don't feel like they have to stick to a mirror comp if they decide to run that, I feel like Hammerhead is going to come out on top. Poppy, he's back on it. And back on the Hanzo. He returned to their old stomping ground, but we're seeing the Sigma on the side of Destin DMP. Thongon is on the Baptiste, which the last time they were on that, Poppy was just the headhunter in that scenario. And maybe it will be again, but already the dive shut down by the Sigma. Poppy is going to be able to find a counter pick on to Sieg, and maybe he will be the player to turn this around. But so far, it seems like Hammerhead, they're going to be able to gain control of the point and at least get a couple of Hades is looking for some some more damage, a little bit more all charge on the on the side of Poppy, trying to build that dragon, falling dangerously low, but we'll see whether or not they're able to uh, crack this one open. Oh, a beast prodigy. Stood no chance against that Hanzo, but it's only making up for the pick that the player previously had. All the storm arrows, they just thunder to through Poppy's HP. One little punch onto the Lucio. It's a nice 3k for Dax, and he keeps Hammerhead on the point. He's going to be able to get that Dragon Strike. And even though they do lose a player, it's still a percentage on the point that really counts in this scenario. They have the advantage here with that Dragon Strike, like you said, and also with the pop Pulse Bomb coming up soon. And even though Hades might touch the point, it's only temporary, right? They're going to recontest. They're going to look for an opportunity to take that back. Oh, Dax might not be able to survive from the room. So this should be Hades flipping the point. There's going to be no contest. So it would be convenient for Hammerhead to just back up in this scenario. They're really racking ults up. And Pound is a little bit behind an ult charge. But Seiya is directly at almost the exact same percentage. So there really isn't losing anything in this scenario. But I can just tell you, we are going to see a lot of ults being used. A great little play there from C Takes down Poppy. And it's the exact same play. But on the other side, Botanzo is getting dropped by a pulse bomb. Both supports getting taken out by an ultimate but rune was able to find two and that's going to be the difference maker with Lop. it's really tough to play against hades in this scenario where you have the nano monkey potential and even just the winston potential to jump into the back line against a zenyatta and a baptiste which have low mobility okay uh i i said rune found two and then destined emp just went crazy he found a rock and said, I will kill everybody with this thing. So he's going to be able to flip the point. They keep both of their support ultimates. They have Dax's Dragon Strike, which 
isn't going to be a, a too crazy thing, but the Transcendence is one thing you have to keep an eye on. It's going to be able to sustain this team in a fight, which we are getting very close to last fight territory. And the Transcendence just gains power the closer and closer we get to 99. Dragon Strike is coming out here. Fine. Saya and Poppy in the background. Hammerhead getting a big advantage here. Rune taking a little bit of a, of a dip in the chasm here. Trying to reset. They really have a not really any time to touch here. They're going to have to go as fast as possible. Swap onto the Hammond to even get a chance to touch. I don't know if they will be, to be honest. Yeah, uh, you're, you're going to have the Tracer get there at the last second, but... Oh no, damage. There's so much damage going through that window. Not even the B-drop will be able to save Rune. Destiny of P just continues it. Rocks with a beautiful shot onto Seiya. And Dax continues to establish his dominance over Poppy on this round. A very good round coming out from the entirety of Hammerhead. I think everybody seemed to be doing a pristine version of their job. I was talking earlier about that lack of mobility, but you know, that doesn't really matter if you're able to just burst the Winston down before he can even get to you, right? Or if you have the, uh, if you're just getting picks, right? So that's what Hammerhead was essentially able to accomplish is just be able to whittle down the Hades, like as the Hades team as they were splitting up during their dives. We're back on the Ramantra. A situation that we decided that Hades seemed to be the better in. It's that a Symmetra, not, well, not Symmetra May, the May Wall comp, which Hades did seem to dominate when we we're back on Antarctica. But which wall is going to be better? And in this scenario, it seems like it is Hades. We're able to take out Segan without a consistent amount of damage. You can just see just how much Symmetra is pouring into these players. This will allow Hammerhead to convene, try to attack as Hades takes this point. You're really able to just charge up that beam really quickly in this team comp, right? Whether it's off the wall, whether it's off of the, the, the barrier, it's just a lot of damage potential from the Symmetra. And in this mirror comp, like you were saying, it comes down to these walls. If you're able to isolate, if you're able to deny that immortality field to get rid of that brawl potential, that's what it comes down to. Symmetra still doing so much damage, but now Rune doesn't have any good amount of heals, only the Lucio heals, and that is not going to be enough to stain you with this massive amount of damage that Symmetra puts through on her beam. Hades, they can keep that point, so Hammerhead, they're going to be able to have that window, they're going to be able to get that Annihilation and Blizzard before their opponents, and that could be the difference, but you have to keep an eye on Poppy's ball. Not only could it be the difference, but it might be match, right? because Hammerhead is also very close to getting those ults as well, and it's staying on point for maybe 10 seconds. You can farm really quickly. Wall isn't as effective as Prodigy would have liked, and Dax is going to commit the Blizzard, and only the Blizzard, which is a huge win for Hammerhead. They're going to be able to keep all four of their ultimates because Pwn is going to be able to get that sound barrier online. This is going to be a messy team fight because you can tell Rune should commit that Annihilation, and Poppy should commit that wall if they really want to create a barrier, literally, in between them and the enemy. You're going to see a lot of visual effects hit your screen, that's for sure. You're going to see all the walls, all the sound barriers come out. That's what it takes to uh, sustain here. Oh, oh, it's, oh, it's reminding me of Overwatch fun. It could be way worse, but I think we can tell the story. Hades are winning. They're able to take out the tank. They're able to take out seeing it, and they turn around the team fight, still only committing the Blizzard. I have no idea how these teams haven't poured everything in the kitchen sink at each other, but at one point, it is gonna be true chaos, I can tell. Especially with the wall, you're able to deny most of the value of the mail if it's placed correctly, uh, the, the Symmetra wall. So I, it's just really coming down to your positioning and your ability to sit with these team compositions, especially in a mirror as well. Falls, 
annihilations are going to be used on both sides, but the window just provides so much more damage and healing, and Hades cannot deal with it. So they commit two ults, Hammerhead commits two ults, and Hades do have to fall back on that wall that they haven't used in the entirety of this round, and still have to find something with not a lot of power behind the ultimates that they have. Hammerhead's turrets are also doing a lot of work here. We are doing a lot of damage that fight, and you need to be able to deal with them early on before you have to focus on the Ramatra that's just walking into your front line. Okay, Hammerhead have to back off due to the window, and that is actually enough time for Hades to flip the point. So this fight can go for a very long time, but at this point, it is do or die territory. For Hades, they don't have the time to reconvene and try again for a last second fight. There's not enough time, but so far, nobody goes down on each side. Blizzard is committed, and it's just in the line for Hades. One will fall, two will fall, and May does use the Blizzard, but I think it might be too little too late and there's not enough damage that rune can do he will go down hammerheads will get to 99 percent and you can only imagine them as the overtime whip ticks down they will win map five after an amazing map four comeback they win king of the hill and move on in the tranquility playoffs what an amazing series hammerhead bring it back after in map and in, in, in each map, there was a massive time bit. Well, and they were just able to just really just fortify their mental and then just make the best of a bad situation and bring it all the way home. I think it was beautiful. It was a great coordinated play from this team that even when the chips were down, they never called it quits. They never threw their hat in and they just played the long game. And it's very impressive that what they were able to do in map four, down 100 meters, they had to win several consecutive team fights. They were able to do that. And then they go on the pall and don't drop a single round and show Hades that they are the more dominant Ramatra when it really counts. Wiggloff, what an exciting series, honestly. Seriously, and really shout out to Dax and Destin because they were really able to find their rhythm together and make the best of their dive comps, make the best of really that, that synergy, really find that synergy where you're coming back from what seems like a really defeating moment when you're really that far behind and you have to think very quickly on your feet to be able to see how can we counter, what is wrong with our play style, why aren't we winning these fights and be able to bring it back and win the series and i think thumb gun we, we kind of knocked them on that first map because they went down so many times early on in the team fights but as the series went on came a lot more consistent became a great source of healing and a big reason why those two were able to do what they do i also want to shout out rune on the side of hades he did a wonderful job early on on the ramatra and especially early on in that the kind of second third, fourth map, his Winston did find its stride. Unfortunately, just wasn't enough to keep Hammerhead away from moving on in the Transcendence tier playoffs. And so far, I, I think we are going to wrap it up for tonight, Wiggloff. It's been an exciting series. I mean, do you want to close us out? Do you want to tell us the scores of the other playoffs? So let's take a look at the other, the other maps that went on or the other games that went on. So Devil Dukes was taking it with three maps to one against Throwing or Bad. Boomers took it clean sweep against Hivemind with a 3-0 with Fleet Angels also following with a win against Revital. And then Singularity sweeping Reckless Delta with a 3-0. So a lot of sweeps tonight, actually. This was the, <laughs> um, the only map five that we saw, so Y'all tuned into the, the good one. I, I'm happy that we got to see this one because you provided all the excitement that we we're looking for. That being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's been an exciting cast night with Wiglop and I back to bring you more Overwatch action. Make sure you tuned in for the rest of the Tranquility playoffs. It's continuing on throughout the rest of the month and make sure you're tuned in on the Twitch channel. So keep your eyes peeled and your eels peeled for more Overwatch 2 action coming your way.